Role of a Nurse Practitioner by Annie Bettis Walker for Auburn University. Um, introduction, my name is Annie Bettis Walker. I started in healthcare in 2003 as an LPN. I returned to school and graduated in 2008 with my ADN. I obtained my BSN in 2016 and I started graduate school in 2016 also. I worked in pulmonary care, medical surgical nursing, cardiology nursing, bariatric surgery, and travel nursing. I'm currently employed as neurology clinical care coordinator and the MS nurse for USA Health System. Now, the purpose of this PowerPoint is just to discuss the educational requirements associated with advanced practice nurse, also to discuss the role and scope of practice of advanced um, practice nurses. Um, the scope of practice is always evolving and it varies from state to state. So I'll attempt to present current issues with regulations associated with nurse practitioners in Alabama and address any solutions. Educational background. Um, a PCMP or FMP is an advanced practice nurse who completed either a graduate or postgraduate degree that allows him or her to practice as a nurse midwife, specialist, anesthetist, or practitioner. FMPs provide health care to patients at all stages of life, from infant to geriatric. MPs must earn at least a master's degree in nursing with the option to earn a doctor's in nursing practice or DMP. There are educational and certification requirements for all APRNs. These requirements are determined by educators and professional organizations. Consensus model requires that education content for all APRNs must include graduate level courses in advanced pathophysiology, advanced physical assessment, and advanced pharmacology. These courses are known as the APRN core. Once the APRN completes an accredited program, he or she must pass a national certification exam. This exam must be in the area of the intended practice. Advanced practice registered nurses are regulated in one of four roles. These roles include clinical nurse specialist, clinical practitioner, nurse midwife, and nurse anesthetist. APRNs practicing in these roles provide care to the following six populations, psychiatric or mental health, women's health, adult gerontology, pediatrics, neonatal, and families across the lifespan. The scope of practice for MPs is determined by each state. This includes diagnosing, prescriptive authority, and reimbursement. MP responsibilities are expressed through a contract which identifies responsibilities, prerogatives, and limitations of the role. The scope of practice for MP changes whenever knowledge evolves, new care delivery models are created, and whenever new patient care needs or deficits are identified. 21 states and the District of Columbia allow MPs to have full practice authority. This means that MPs can provide care without physician oversight. The other remaining states allow MPs to fully practice in their scope if they have a collaborative agreement with a physician. Significant amounts of research have been conducted on MP care and has shown that MPs provide high quality, cost effective care. MP provides primary care that is equal in quality to that of physicians. They score better in some categories, including patient satisfactory. Um, practice setting for MPs. MPs provide quality patient care in many different practice settings. APRNs act as both primary and acute care providers. MPs have helped to improve the primary care by increasing the accessibility of providers in the community. Um, this has been achieved due to the recent increased development of walk-in, retail, and urgent care clinics. MPs also work in community nursing centers. These centers um, study healthcare accessibility to vulnerable populations such as those in rural areas. Acute care MPs provide care to patients who present with new onset or an exacerbation of an existing illness. Acute care nurse practitioners provide care in many different practice settings. 
Acute care nurse practitioners work in hospitals, intensive care units, long-term acute care hospitals, outpatient and inpatient hospices, special offices, and operating rooms. Acute care nurse practitioners also act as geriatric acute care nurse practitioners. Um, these NPs provide care for older adults. Um, they currently work in emergency rooms, ICUs, step-down units, progressive care units, and medical surgical units. They also provide long-term care to patients in various outpatient settings, such as long-term acute care hospitals, dialysis centers, and heart failure clinics. They have also begun to work in various um, specialty practices. These patients require regular follow-up, and these MPs can provide the constant monitoring that they require. The women's health and gender-related MP role has grown due to a lack of available providers. MPs provide the following women's health needs, family planning, infertility, sexual dysfunction, gynecological care, perimenopausal issues, and diagnosis and treatment of sexually transmitted diseases. Women are often unable to get care because they have low income and lack of resources. Um, they also provide care to men. The MPs evaluate and manage men's health issues such as STIs and fertility issues. MPs also provide transitional care to patients. Um, transitional care MPs help patients shift from the hospital back into the community. This is done by addressing discharge concerns and providing education. Um, this will in turn help to prevent patients from returning to the hospital because their discharge instructions were not clear to the patient. MPs are being utilized in long-term care facilities, nursing homes, and rehabilitation centers. Um, these health facilities also provide care to patients who have chronic health conditions and these conditions sometimes go untreated until they become serious. Um, the need for mental health providers has grown continuously, so the uh, role of MPs of the psychiatric and mental health nurse has developed. A national certification is now in place for psychiatric and mental health MPs, and they provide care across the lifespan. Um, nurse midwife, they um, act as expert clinicians. They provide primary care to women throughout the lifespan, perform, perform physical assessments, prescribe medications, they order laboratory and diagnostic tests, provide prenatal care, gynecological, labor, and birth care. They also provide health education to patients regarding obstetrical care, provide education regarding primary care issues, they act as educators in educational institutions, community health centers, health agencies, and birthing centers. The nurse specialists act as an expert clinician. They synthesize and interpret data, make clinical decisions and recommendations, evaluate response to implemented practices. They identify and prioritize clinical problems and help staff develop critical judgment skills. They encourage a caring and supportive work environment and utilize evidence-based practice guidelines and research. Prescriptive authority. Um, MPs and physicians alike have lost clinical time because MPs in most states do not have full prescribing authority. 21 states in the District of Columbia allow MPs to have full practice authority. The state of Alabama, however, allows MPs to prescribe controlled substances only with a DEA number and a qualified Alabama controlled substance certificate. And they have limited authority to prescribe Schedule II narcotics. Collaborative practice, the continued growth of the APRN role requires the MPs and physicians work together to provide quality care to patients. 29 states require the MPs to have a collaborative practice of some degree. Potential care settings, hospice and palliative care are two practice settings that are emerging practice areas for APRNs. Individuals in the United States are living longer and thus they have a higher incidence of increased serious illness. Um, Joel 2018 suggests that palliative care services help to improve access and quality of life, increase patient and family satisfa 
satisfactions and contain costs. Um, this writer thinks that the two biggest issues in NP regulation and scope of practice are prescriptive authority and physician collaboration. Many times physicians are not physically located in the clinic or other practice areas. Um, NPs can write prescriptions, but with limitations, this is a, a great step in the right direction, but NPs should have full prescriptive authority. They provide quality, efficient care. They follow practice guidelines and ensure that patients receive safe and effective care. They provide patients and family members with education and follow up on any care that's implemented. So they should be trusted to prescribe any medication that is deemed necessary to adequately treat a patient. This writer also feels that EMP should not be mandated to have a collaboration with a physician to practice. They should be able to own and operate clinics and other healthcare facilities without partnering with a physician. EMPs have sound judgment. Palliative care is a practice setting that would benefit from MPs due to prolonged lifespan. More patients develop chronic illness and require palliative care. Limited prescriptive authority and mandated physician collaboration will limit the MP from truly embracing this role. Um, these patients require controlled substances and MPs have to coordinate physicians to provide some of these medications due to their restrictions. This can impede care for the patient. They also work in various um, healthcare settings, including inpatient, outpatient, skilled nursing, and rehabilitation facilities and in patients' homes. So doctors may not be readily available to the MPs. Tribute to a nurse practitioner. Being a nurse means you will never be bored. You will always be frustrated. You will be surrounded by challenges, so much to do in so little time. You will carry immense responsibility and very little authority. You will step into people's lives and you will make a difference. Some will bless you, some will curse you. You will see people at their worst and at their best. You will never cease to be amazed at people's capacity for love, courage, and endurance. You will see life begin and end. You will experience resounding triumphs and devastating failures. You will cry a lot, you will laugh a lot. You will know what it is to be human and to be humane. The end. And these are my references. Dr. Farrell, this is Annie Bettis Walker. I'm one of your students that does not like to be on the camera, but I decided I'll let you know that it was actually me who was narrating this PowerPoint. Thank you so much for your help this semester.